Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard. I'm T Captain X, and today we're going to be bringing you 30 tips to drop 30 kills on a Sheikah Island. Now, if you've never even dropped 20 kills or maybe never even 10, this video is still going to be perfect for you. There's going to be a lot of useful information for you guys to take and carry over into your own gameplay. Tip number one, you got to land hot and you got to land near a buy station, preferably somewhere central in the map. If you want to drop high kill games and you're landing in the middle of nowhere, it's just simply not going to happen. Now, my top thought process of when I'm landing in is getting my loadout early and getting it ASAP. And that's tip number two, prioritize getting your loadout. So personally, I like to go somewhere like power plant, which I am here currently, because I can come down here into this bunker and open this bunker room by hitting all the, uh, the, the levers here. Now, somebody starts shooting me in the middle while I'm trying to open it. So obviously we got to deal with him first and then we're going to go back and I have to hit the rest of uh, the other levers. Now, if you've never opened this down here before, you have to hit the levers in order of when you come in from power plant. So I had to go back and hit three and then four because I had done one and two. So you get a lot of great stuff from this room. You, I normally will walk out with around $10,000 or so. Uh, I am playing solos. So of course in solos loadout is only $8,000. And again, that is why I really want to prioritize getting my loadout down. That way, when that spawned free loadout comes down, if I do happen to die, I can land back on the free loadout and it's like nothing ever happened. You know, we can keep the momentum. When you get in games and you lose your loadout guns altogether, that's when you really start to get in the blender and you really start to lose pace and things slow down. And we have to avoid that if we want to drop a high kill game. Now, utilize your equipment. I was hearing audio cues, so I had one of those uh, portable radars and I chucked it and look up here in the top left. Somebody is pinging. There's a solid dot here and he there is no up or down arrow. That means he's on my level. That means he is right in front of me. So I'm just going to pre-aim this nice and easy. We get him cracked and he tries to, you know, throw some movement and stuff. But because I got the initial early shots on, it didn't matter. Now, I heard more people out there. And all I did was I slowed down. I pre-aimed and I saw the next guy and got him. So now I'm finally trying to get over here by loadout. But then I see another person. Of course, this guy's right on me. We have to deal with him. So again, we're going to utilize our equipment. I've got a Semtex grenade. We throw it and that forces him to kind of run away. Since he's ran away, I was able to crack his armor. I'm going to really quickly buy my loadout and throw it down. And I'm going to also get some plates for myself because I didn't have any. Now, I go up here, and of course, we see this guy right here. Instead of trying to just immediately reach out, I run back down and get away into cover, and then we kind of reset the fight. Always want to get back to cover first. Now, this is tip number four. Never re-challenge from the same angle twice. We're not going to go through that same doorway. We're going to take a different route, and this is going to end up kind of surprising him a little bit. Again, watch how I just slow down. He's trying to run around like crazy on me. This is actually Hydrocam, someone that I know who is a very good player himself. He just didn't have a gun at the time which is why I was able to get him. So regardless, we have got our loadout down finally here. Now I'm hearing footsteps above me and this is going to be tip number five. Less movement is better movement sometimes in Warzone 2. Watch how all I do is pre-aim and he came around flying trying to hit a jump towel, but who won the gunfight? The guy that was pre-aiming wins the gunfight. TTK is very fast in Warzone 2. At the end of the day, the majority of the time it comes down to who hits first shots uh, and who hits the better shots is really what it comes down to. Now, tip number six, you have to keep moving to the hot areas. Now, I didn't hear anyone else around me at power plant, but I see a loadout coming down. There's a guy flying in right here and I'm hearing shots over here. So we are going. We have to keep the pace and keep going. I get one down. I almost get the second, but I'm going to get high alerted to my left here in one second. So I got that high alert. Now, when you get high alerted, prioritize getting to cover. Don't go for the crazy ego chow, just get to cover. So I dive, I get behind this rock, I throw a smoke, that way I can move. Now, I still know there's a guy in this building from earlier because I didn't get the down. So I'm gonna use the smoke and I'm gonna, that's gonna kind of isolate the guy to my left and we're gonna go deal with this guy first. Now we take our time nice and easy here. Gonna get this guy, he was weak, it's an easy kill. So. Now, I know I've got people back behind me. I see end up seeing a guy in front of me. We try to get shots on, but he's able to get away. He's pretty far away. So I'm trying to make decisions. Where do I want to go here? I knew that guy was on that building from earlier. So we're going to go ahead and call a precision airstrike on him just to see what happens. And honestly, it was probably a waste of a PA. You really should try to preference PAs only to get finishes when someone's down, but it's all good. Now, as I move up, there was a guy right here that I just missed. I also know there's people to my left as I'm hearing people. So watch. This is going to be tip number eight, and that is centering. 
Watch my crosshair. See how my crosshair is center level. It's chest level here. Because as soon as he comes out, he's basically right there. I'm aiming at his butt. So ideally, I would be aiming a little bit higher. But it's an easy kill because my crosshair was already centered on the area that he was most likely to be. Got another guy running in here. We get him cracked here, but I'm not going to chase from that same angle. Here's my buddy Hydra from earlier. We hit some good shots on him and we get him down. So we're reloading. There's still a lot of things going on here. I'm trying to slow down here. Tip number nine, don't run visible lasers. See this laser right here? This is so easy to see and it completely gives away your position. That's why I always personally run the one milliwatt laser or the peck laser, the one that is not visible. That way I can pre-aim more because like I've talked about a lot, pre-aiming is incredibly important. Whoever shoots first generally wins. So I don't like to run visible lasers on my SMGs. Now let's talk about perks here really quickly. I'm trying to figure out where people are. I don't really know where to go. I get high alerted to my right here. So uh, personally to me, high alert has been far, far more valuable than ghost. I think ghost is a good perk for the very average level, below average kind of new player who doesn't want to get pushed from other people. But again, I really like, uh, I am really, really liking high alert lately. It saved me much more. Now, perk number 11, I want to go back here just slightly here. Right before this, I heard an audio cue. Sometimes when you hear audio in this game, the best thing to do is just sit and listen. So all I do is I start sitting, I pre-aiming, and I'm able to get this guy cracked. Now, again, we're not going to chase from the same angle. We're going to take a different angle here. There's a third party going on. We're going to get the reload before we go in, and I'm trying to figure out where is this guy. Can't tell up or down. There he is. We get shots on him. We get the finish. Vertical audio is definitely very tough in this game. Um, and a lot of the times you kind of just have to sit and wait and, and figure out here. Now, that right there was a situation of that guy just popped out of nowhere and I hit good shots. I was able to get the kill. And that's going to be tip number 12, which is sometimes you just have to run the meta if you want to drop a high kill game. Another situation right there. I beam that guy with a Lockman 556. I just posted my video on what I'm saying is the best loadout in Warzone 2 Season 3 Reloaded, and that is the Lockman 556 and the Lockman Sub. So if you want to drop Pico games, you got to run the meta. I cover a lot of what is the meta, what are the best loadouts are on my channel. So if you want to see that, uh, consider dropping a sub and leaving a like as well. Now, that situation right there, I want to talk about this here really briefly here. Again, with this fast CTK, one of the big things in this game, I had a ping coming in. This guy is a guy down low here. You... You don't want to get caught sprinting. If you get caught sprinting in a close range fight, you're often going to lose. So watch how I am like strafing nice and slowly with my crosshair centered. I'm not just sprinting up and chasing this guy because if I am sprinting and I have to pull my gun down, the chances of him winning that fight are much, much higher. So you have to find that balance of constantly pushing, but also slowing down in close range. Now this tip number 14 is going to be from my good friend, Cup of Joe. Loot bodies, not boxes. I just bought a bunch of stuff and I still have $16,000 left, but I haven't looted since the beginning of the game basically. And that's because I am getting a lot of kills. Once you get your loadout, stop looting. Just go and start fighting people. Now I just popped a UAV and there is a red dot here coming in. So again, I'm gonna just pre-aim nice and slow. This guy's gonna run right into me. He's using a riot shield. One of the, a small side tip here with riot shielders, Try to shoot their toes. Try to keep your distance. Once you can get a few shots on them, then that is when you have to go. Now, tip number 16. Let's, or I'm sorry, tip number 15, pace. 6644 is the pace that my good friend Cup of Joe goes by for how to drop a 20 bomb. Six kills in the first circle, six in the second, four in the third, and then four in the end game. That's how you drop a 20 bomb. Now for a 30 bomb, I think the pace is a little bit tricky. It kind of varies. I'd say it's probably 10, 8, 6, 6. Um, and we are on 17 right now in the second circle. So we are absolutely on 30 pace. Some games you just get to a slow start. Now, after recording this, I realized I got a little discombobulated and out of order here. So I skipped tip number 17, which is to pre-fire in close quarters fights when possible. When I was running down here, I got high alerted to my right and I see a guy that is on the right side of this hallway just kind of sitting there waiting for me. And so because I know he's waiting Waiting for me as I'm strafing around this corner I'm already starting to shoot I'm pre-firing basically to increase my chances of getting those first shots on and to more likely win the gunfight it is what it is now tip number 17 or I'm sorry I'm skipping tip guys <laughs> tip number 16 hit your shots at the end of the day you have to have good aim in this game 
Um, one of the big things I'd recommend you guys, if you are struggling, struggling with your aim, if you are a newer player, I highly recommend you check out my settings video where I go over all my settings, but also talk about several strategies on how to improve your aim. Now, tip number 18 is actually going to be about another perk here. I want to go back here just slightly here. That's going to be the tracker perk. I think tracker is so incredibly underrated here as one of the perks because I hear a guy. I'm not really sure where he is, but then I see his footsteps. And now I know because I, I maybe he went left, maybe he went straight, but I just follow the tracker. I think tracker is so useful in close quarter situations, especially with how the audio can be very inconsistent in Warzone 2. Um, so I really, my perks, I go overkill and tracker, and then I go fast hands and high alert are the perks that I am running. So coming up here, we are at 19 kills still in the second uh, circle. If you look, there is a guy landing in above me here, and that's, and that's probably one of the guys I just killed. So we're going to mount up here. We end up missing a lot of shots. I just talked about hitting your shots, and we missed a lot there, but we do sneak the kill with one of the last few bullets. So 20 kills, second circle. We're on a banger game. Now let's check out the map here. Zone is finishing, and I'm going to be just in zone, but I've got to start working this way, and I'm kind of in a peculiar spot because these guys have the high ground around me, and that is going to be tip number 19. Don't give up the high ground like this guy does here. I'm trying to be careful here in playoff of cover when I see this guy. Now see how I take a natural head glitch here. See how only the top half of my reticle is just exposed from this wall. That means if he's looking at me, he can barely see me exposed. If he turned and started shooting me here, I'm in a really tough spot. But guess what? He runs down the hill, gives up his high ground, and gives up his cover, allowing me to get a much easier kill here. Now, tip number 20 here really quick. I want to talk about inventory management. The general rule of thumb, what I like to do in terms of keeping my inventory here, is I like to have all of my slots full with plates. And then I like to have, in a perfect situation, we'll have a munitions box on hand. Uh, a kill streak on hand, and then I keep one extra slot as kind of my wild card. Either an extra kill streak, maybe an extra self revive, maybe an armor box. Uh, but that is my general rule of thumb when it comes to keeping my inventory management up. So we are at 22 kills here, here, and now I've got to really start looking at the map here and start moving here. Because we've got 20 seconds. Now, tip number 21 is going to be spend your money, especially on a fire cell. We've got a fire cell here. Again, loot bodies, not boxes. I've got a ton of money. So I'm going to get two UAVs here. We're going to pop them. I've already got a self rev. My inventory is where I need it to be. Now, I honestly probably should have popped an advanced UAV, but I didn't. So in hindsight, probably should have done that. Tip number 22, you got to learn to read the minimap well. See how this red dot pops from the UAV and he is a solid, there's no up or down arrow. That means he's on my level. That means he's in the gas station and I'm looking straight towards him. Now, as I move forward though, watch the map here as it pings again. Now he's up above and there's another one up here. So now I'm like, okay, he must have moved out. So now I want to take high ground here. So I'm going to get up top here. We're going to try and see him. I didn't see him at first. I think he's actually right over here. But now the guy to my left is in my closest view. I go to shoot and I had the wrong gun out. So we're going to take our time, switch to our long range gun. I end up missing a few shots, but we get him down. Now, as I look back, because I'm checking for where is the other guy, there he is. So we're not going to ego chow. We're going to get down. We're going to reload. Now I do go for an ego chow as I see him going down here. This was an okay ego chow though, because if for some reason it was bad, I could easily get back to cover to the left. So as I see him dropping down, I switch to my close range gun. And this is going to be tip number 23, slow down in close quarter situations. This isn't Rebirth Island. This isn't Warzone 1. We're not going inside canceling bunny hopping everywhere. Slow down, pre-aim, have good centering. Drop shotting is one of your best friends in close quarter situations just like that. Okay. 24 kills, third circle. I have a UAV pinging right here in front of me. So I am, again, slowing down. I'm trying to look where he is. I hear him. We look. I'm gonna get shots, get the kill there. So tip number 24 coming up here very shortly is going to be trigger discipline. I call my other UAV here. Now I'm centering where this red dot is. I'm looking for him. See how I'm, and now I see him right here. Should I shoot or should I not? If I were to shoot right now, it's very easy if he goes away that he's able to get to cover and then now this fight becomes a 50-50. He has no idea I'm there, so I'm gonna get just a little bit closer and get to an area where I have a clear, clean shot of him. Okay, moving up here. We are, respawn is getting ready to disable 26 kills. 
I potentially could have get, we slowed down a little bit. This was maybe a 40 pace game, but we, we lost pace a little bit here when the lobby started to die. Tip number 20, where are we guys? Tip number 25, always take high ground when you have the opportunity. Instead of pushing in from a, a ground level with them, I decided to go up top and it just makes kills easier whenever you have an opportunity to take high ground. So coming up here, I saw that guy landing in. Again, I'm taking high ground. There he is. Ends up being an easy kill. We get the down and finish. Now I get high alerted. We immediately go for cover there. We're going to reload here. Now I heard audio pretty close over here. I don't know how well you guys heard it. So this is going to be tip number 26. Don't get caught mantling. If, if you're chasing somebody and you know they're just over something that you have to mantle up to, it's very risky for you to try and mantle and chow that. But I end up hearing him, I, the footsteps dissipated. Like I could hear him going away. So I was like, okay, we're good. I can mantle. And then again, I see the tracker. We slow down here. Now, this is also going to go into tip number 27. When somebody is on a head glitch in close quarters, when they're very close to you, you have two options. You either trust your shots and you try to hit them off the head glitch or some, one technique you can do, and this is something that I like doing a lot, is I get aggressive and I jump chow this. So I, I peek behind cover and then I'm gonna run and jump chow this because what this does is that jump basically gets me at a, top, a higher angle and I can see more of his body by doing that. It's a, kind of more of an advanced thing and you have to be careful about it. Now, I get high alerted here. This is gonna be tip number 28. Use cover to cut off your angles from your enemies here, but as I'm getting, I got high alerted there. Now I'm hearing footsteps to my left. And now I know there's two different enemies, one on each side of me. So I have to take full advantage of this cover here. And we're going to use this cover to cut off angles from another enemy here. So I hear the one left. We hit a drop shot. That's one of your best friends. Immediately, I look to the right to see if the other guy's challenging. He's not. We hit the throwing knife here. And let me, let me go back a little bit because it's getting a little stuttery here for whatever reason so we'll go back here to where we jump in for the head glitch clue we get him again i'm gonna start hearing people both sides of me i get high alerted i check i don't see him i hear left hit the drop shot immediately check right get my kill and immediately i look back and because i was able to play off play off that cover if that guy to the right would have challenged me a little bit earlier i would have drop shotted below where he, I would have cut that angle off and it would have gave me a chance if they both challenged me at the exact same time. Now, tip number 29, when we're in the end game here, really try to use UAVs to figure out where the rest of the map is and kind of visualize where everybody is. There's two players, there's three players left, but me plus two. So I know there's two others and there's two people on the mini map. So I know nobody's behind me. I know where everybody is. And now coming in with a final tip, find the power position in the end game and don't sell your game trying to just full go at the last kill or so so that you can break your PR. It would really suck to miss, you know, to lose the game in this situation. Now, one of the guys ends up dying to the other one. I could have just sat here the entire time and I probably could have let him come to me, but I decided to move up here and play off of cover almost gets really risky because for whatever reason he airstriked himself so i back up but again we're just going to play off of cover we're going to pre-aim the door where he's most likely to be we're going to get the dub we're going to walk away with a 32 kill game so guys i hope you found this video helpful try to apply some of these tips to your game and try to remind yourselves of these things and i guarantee you guys will see some success again check out my settings video if you want to know what my settings are and my tips to practice my aim otherwise thanks so much for watching guys we'll see you in the next one